Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Let's take a walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews. Today, look at this monster can. This is a 32 ounce crowler that uh, Angela and Anthony has sent to me from Texas. Uh, this is done by Pine House Pizza, and they're in Austin, Texas. And uh, pretty damn sure that they probably picked it up there and had it filled there. So, uh, I appreciate them picking this up, sending it to me. He sent a little note here, and basically it doesn't tell me a lot about the beer. Uh, he just told me to do this pretty quick. So I just got this uh, day before yesterday. <laughs> so that's about as quick as I could do it. I didn't do any reviews yesterday. Uh, so let's get on with it and see what we got here. It says 6.5%, but they've handwritten on the side here, and it looks like it's 6. Seven or nine, it may be 6.5. Whoever wrote in there, I can't read the writing too well, but it's six point some percent. So we're gonna leave it there. And nice little skull graphics with the P on it for a pint house, I'm sure. So evidently, it's a little pizza house brew pub type thing going on there for these guys. And there are several uh, other uh, establishments that have their own little pizza place and, uh, and have beers there uh, that they brew. So, looking forward to this, uh, according to what he's telling me, this is supposed to be a juice bomb. Great big can. I hope I'm going to get enough of this huge offering. Uh, if any of it has settled to the bottom of the can, I'm not going to be able to get that in this glass here and won't know until we pour me a glass and her a glass out of this uh, to see how cloudy. Hopefully it's going to be cloudy all the way up and down. So we shall see you here in just a minute. Uh, I don't have the IBUs listed here on Great Beer. I don't have it listed on uh, Untapped either, so we don't know what the IBUs are on this beer. So I do appreciate Anthony and Angela sending this, picking it up and sending it to me. So let's get on with it. There's uh, no commercial description other than it should be a juice bomb. So let's get this thing opened up, hoping it don't spew all over the place. Uh, it didn't spew, but it's trying to come out of the can. I did turn it upside down before I brought it in here. Hopefully some of that would mix up. Uh, and like I said, you never know when it's going to spew. But pouring something out of a big monster can like this, it's hard to do it gently. Cuisine is curry, Thai cheeses, peppery Monterey pepper jack, sharp blue cheddar, stronger pungent cheeses, gorgonzola lumberger, meat, poultry, fish, shellfish, and salmon. And I will add grilled meat to that. If I can do no, it's going to want to dump all over the place. So we're just going to pour this gently here, guys. Glass water, a pint, back or not, tumbler mug, sound sidel. I'm using my favorite tulip glass. And not recommend for extended settling, guys. It's an IPA. And yeah, we're not going to be able to get much in on this pour. Very well carbonated. A lot of beer is still left in that thing. And it does look like a juice bomb, guys. It's very, very cloudy. Looks like orange juice in the glass. On that, wasn't meant to be an aggressive pour, but it ended up being a good two fingers of head on it. Good looking beer. Let's get a nose on it. Oh, wonderful aroma. Big juicy oranges and pineapple and grapefruit. And some mango. And some kiwi. A lot of tropical fruit notes in there. A lot of fruitiness. Ah, smells wonderful. And I'm thirsty. First beer of the day. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Anthony, Angela. I do appreciate it. Mm. 
very nice. A strong bitterness on the back end, though. I've used are probably pretty far up there. Very tasty. Extremely tasty. Big can too. I bet this wasn't the, an inexpensive beer to purchase, even though they fill them in uh, and. Uh, Put the tops on them there for these great big uh, crawlers, as they call these big can, mini keg, 32 ounces. So, enough to share uh, uh, with two, three, maybe even four people if you wanted to share it around. So, awesome lacing is fucked on the glass. Very, very tasty, guys. But let's sip on it, pour her glass. Might take us a while to finish this 32 ounce there off. And, uh, We'll come back and do the final grade chug. Pretty impressive beer. A lot of these breweries are doing these juice bombs, not just not just the ones in New England. Uh, a lot of them all across the country are, are doing them, and I wouldn't doubt they're they're doing them, you know, around the world, uh, especially over in the UK and places like that. Uh, these have become very popular over the last year, so and very popular with me. Real my palate. Yes, I, I love these things. I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. Been sipping on it for a little while now. Very, very tasty. Uh, it's nice to see the breweries all around the country and other places in the world that are starting to do these juice bombs. Uh, it's a very nice style. I mean, a lot of people don't like them. I do. I'm one of them that do like them. Uh, there were probably been a time... Uh, Earlier, uh, when I first started doing beer reviews, I wouldn't have been a fan of these cloudy beers because I was stupid, because I was ignorant of the fact that the beers that I brew are not cloudy like this, and that's because of the the two stage uh, secondary transferring from one to the other, um, where everything drops out and clarifies, and and I actually put in uh, Irish moss in there to. Keep it from being cloudy. Uh, I do not filter my beers, uh, but they are not cloudy and they are not juice bombs like this. Of course, I don't super dry hop anything. If I put an ounce of, uh, uh, of hops in, in the beer to dry hop, that's, that's good. There's a lot of people that four, five, six ounces or even more dry hopping their beers to get that huge super hot profile in there and I'm probably going to do on my next beer that I do I'm going to dry hop the hell out of it I'm going to probably put five or six ounces in there just to see how much that changes the beer and how much more hop aroma and taste it gives to the beer experiment if you will I think this is an awesome beer like I said I'm pretty sure that Angela and Anthony uh, had this field at uh, at the place there at uh, Pine House Pizza uh, Probably a reason why it does not have a date on it, because they do it there, and there's no dating machine to date it. Uh, they do, they did write in here. Uh, I kind of would wish they would kind of put a date on that, where they're writing this information on there. But they're expecting you to drink this probably pretty quick. Uh, this is not something they're going to feel, and you're going to sell it for a year or two. They probably expect you to have this within the first two to four weeks, or maybe maybe this will keep for two months or even three months. I'm not sure. I've not tried that yet. Nobody around here does this style of beer or does the crawlers as far as I know. So I did find this very, very enjoyable. Very, very nice beer. It was a little strong on the bitterness right out of the fridge. Seems to have subsided a little bit because probably I've been drinking on it for a while. Seems to be very, very tasty. Huge hop aroma. Excellent beer, guys. Final chug. Electric jellyfish. Damn tasty. Very, very nice. Look at the lacing on that glass. Incredible. Awesome beer, guys. The only fuss I got is not having a date on it. And that goes without saying. It was filled at, at, at the place where they bought it there, at the Pine House Pizza Place. So they're probably not wanting you to sell her this. But I would like to see a date on it. Uh, since you're taking the time to write that on there, put the date on it. A month and a year. It takes another two seconds to write that on there too. So, uh, 
I think it's an A beer, guys. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Uh, a new American rating on this, guys, would probably be a 97, 98. Uh, it's very, very dainty. I would buy this beer if it was produced here with a date. Or if I went to, if I had somebody here locally that was doing this style of beer and, and either bottling it or canning it or doing the crawlers, uh, and you had to pick it up there and watch them fill it up. You know how fresh it is. You're watching it going into the container. So, but as far as picking up something like this on the shelf without a date, very hesitant. So that's why it does not get to 10 from me. But if I was there where Angela and Anthony was and I've seen it going into the uh, can itself, I still don't tell you how old the beer, how long has it been in the keg. Uh, so another reason, I'm a date Nazi, so y'all know that. Uh, want to see those dates. So let's run over to Beer Advocate. Beer Advocate says 89 very good. I think it's better than a very good. I think it is almost too outstanding. Over to Ray Beer. Ray Beer says 97 overall. 97 in a style. That's more like it. That's about where I think it is. And over to Untapped. They have it at 4.17 which is definitely in their A numbers. Uh, so we're in agreement with Untapped and uh, Ray Beer on this one. Uh, I think Beer Advocate is a little bit conservative on this beer. I don't know why. I think it's an excellent beer. I don't know why they wouldn't give it a better grade than, than that. So, if you've had this or you're in the vicinity of Pine House Pizza down in Texas and you've had it, let me know what you think of the Electric Jellyfish, the 2017 version of this. So, damn tasty. Come on back tomorrow, guys. Let's see what's in the fridge. See you then.